is going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. As you can tell by the title, today we're going to be talking about wards. We're going to be running through some popular wards, whether I think they are good, they're okay, maybe they're even bad. And then optimal places to ward at all points in the game, whether you're going for early game, trying to defend yourself, you're playing for early game aggression, so you want the deeper wards. Or if maybe it's in late game and you just need to get some wards for objectives if you're playing on the aggressive or defensive. This is just going to be talking about wards. It's going to be a lot of saying the word ward. So starting with duo lane, the most popular ward for duo lane is somewhere in this area. It's usually a pretty heavily centered spot. And I think it is a good ward. The problem comes down to it is very, very competitively warded centuried stuff like that. So if this is a heavily centuried spot, maybe you've placed a ward here and it's been centuried. Don't ward here again. And we'll say, we'll say that's my side over there and this is the enemy side. This is a better ward. If you can get a deep one right up around here, this gives you time around purple buff, gives you little rotations in right here. Somewhere in this area, if you ping it about right, you have to bring it a little bit closer because you want to see when purple buff spawns. I think it's somewhere about right right here. This gives you vision of this entire area. And it stops all ganks coming from parts of that side of the map. Along with that ward, another ward right here to see both sides of this entrance and both sides of this entrance. You can no longer get ganked from the top side. All you need is one of your supports, mid, jungle, even your solo laner can rotate. And then ward underneath right about here. And now your entire side of the map is warded and you cannot get ganked ever unless the enemy has a mercury to come down lane or they jump this wall knowing you have wards here here and here knowing all three spots if they just know one of the wards say they just know this one this one's going to be a pretty common walk spot if they just know this one they're either going to try to walk over top or they're going to walk underneath basically makes you ungankable as an adc and it's good if you are in the lead if you're behind you're not going to be able to ward like that a pretty popular ward spot when you're behind is right here the problem with this ward spot on the defensive is if you're clearing at the halfway mark right up about right here and a jungler pings on that ward you're not going to be able to get away it's too late of a ward you need to ward earlier so you can actually start running away imagine this is a a susano you're not getting away from him a thor he's going to wall you it's too late you're going to have to get your ward deeper somewhere around right here toward these entrances right here so you can actually play to avoid the gank instead of playing to if somebody pings it you're dead warding right there and then warding up here somewhere where you know that they don't have a ward so if they have the advantage you know they're prio centering right here you're just gonna have to get a ward a little bit deeper it's not gonna feel as good a ward somewhere in this area just on the other side we'll say right about here that it covers this entire area will be very good. The only place you can get ganked from is right here. You won't know if the enemy's pathing to the blue, the purple buff, which is a little tough, but it is something you just kind of have to accept. It's not the, something you're going to be able to get all the time. You're sometimes going to have to default your wards to other spots. That was for ADC. Those are some wards for the ADC lane. For support, it's a little bit different. You're going to be playing to kind of ward all over the map. Usually, is he going to chase me? Oh my goodness, man. Surely he doesn't chase me to backs, right? All right. Well, I guess I... I have to stay away from the Agni. He's on mid right now. We gotta let him pass. Like I'm playing one of those sneak video games and I gotta let him pass before I can I can walk up. This is a spot that's pretty commonly warded up here. I think that ward is fine, but a lot of the time it's not really catching anything. My favorite ward as a support is this ward all the way back here. Right about here so you can get time around the green buff when it spawns and you can also get the rotations coming up from this tier too. Now, it doesn't catch anyone coming from all the way back up here, and it doesn't catch anyone coming from over here, over here, but usually up here somewhere where your ADC wants to ward. So this this ward right here is really good to ping the the, uh, the green buff, knowing it's up, and also when somebody's pathing here to try to get these back camps. I think another really good ward is either warding right on the back camps. I think warding so you know where the enemy jungler is, and he's going to be farming the back camps, is really, really strong. I also think the same as like the ADC. I think warding right around here is also very good to see this walking over here to an aggressive gank on your side of the map those are my three favorite supports warding spots usually you're warding left side junglers warding right side and then mids warding for them mid laners like warding right about here i think this ward is fine for mid laners i think it's bad for supports so if you're a mid laner feel free to ward that spot if you're a support probably don't ward that spot leave it for your mid nice he died to my tower I don't have to worry about the bully anymore so like i was saying for mid laners really good ward spots right around here so you ward just on this side of the wall to see if somebody's walking in here, into here, or sitting kind of in this area. This ward will catch them like this. The only ward it won't catch is if they're sitting right around here, just kind of waiting to jump on you. So that's a really good ward. 
And then either the other one is a really good entry ward from their side of the jungle by their jungler in this area, I think is really strong. Or if you want to be a little bit more defensive, you can do it back here to like this. But if they walk around like this, they're going to be able to catch you out. But I think always warding on camps is really strong. And then for junglers, really strong wards are on the enemy back camps. So right back there, if I'm jungling, I want to get wards on that. And then I also want to get wards onto the enemy red buff. Getting buff timers is one of the best things you can do early game. It also just gives you an idea of where the enemy is. Oh, they haven't done their red. They're going to be going to their red soon. Oh, they haven't done their backs. Somebody's going to be going to get those backs soon. Same thing with solo lane. Another thing, ward these back camps. One of you should be warding this back camp. And then the other good ward, you can be warding just somewhere right here. I think this ward is fine. It just doesn't really give you a ton of information. It's just like the jungler's kind of lazily ganking you just walking through here. You kind of have to be wary of them walking underneath too. The good thing about solo lane compared to jungle or compared to ADC is solo laners can live ganks a lot of the time if they see it's coming. If you get a ward right here and then like right around here and you're playing towards your tower, you're kind of hitting wave right around here. Do, 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 do. And then a jungler pings over there. Your one dash takes you to somewhere around here. You jump around here, and then you're almost already close to your tower. So I do think the more defensive wards are going to be fine for solo laners just because they're so much harder to kill. It's good spacing. They can usually live ganks a lot easier, so it makes a lot more sense. Next fight, a Gold Fury fight. Around 15 minutes, your ADC is backing, getting strong, coming to this Gold Fury. Your solo laner is actually backing, also getting strong, coming to this Gold Fury. Now, where do you want to ward for Gold Fury? Obviously, the number one spot is you want a sentry on the Gold Fury pit. Whoever is warding in, it doesn't matter. Just somebody who has a sentry, get a ward on the Gold Fury Pit so you know if they have vision of your ward or, or of your pull or not. Sneaky things that players like to do is they like to ward like right here because if you ward like over here, if you ward just right on the middle of the pit, you can sneak this ward in right here. So if you're planning on pulling the Gold Fury to this side, ward slightly more over to here. R ward right in this area so it catches the wards right around here and right around here. If you're pulling it to this side, obviously ward right around here just so you can catch... The enemy wards around here and around here but say we're on this side of the map enemies on that side where do we want a ward a really good ward is just this one right around here because you want to know if a jungler is looking to rotate around to try to get a flank onto you as you're going for it another really good ward is this one right here same thing again as a jungler or a warrior wrapping on you and then the final good ward is right around here so you can see if they're going to be coming into this gold fury pit or not also if you have like somebody already warding right here getting an even deeper ward up into this area just to see if somebody's walking in from here is going to be very good these are specific ward spots that are not just like overall going to be good for gold fury like i said this one's a really good one anyway this one's a really good one anyway if you have these wards already you can just go to the gold fury anyway just make sure you get a ward on the gold fury pit also a small thing if you're grouping for a gold fury or a pyro or a fire giant and you don't have any ward vision down it's slightly more prioritized for your tanks to get the deep rewards or your jungler to get the deep, deep reward. If you're playing mid lane and you're getting ready for Fire Giant and you walk up here by yourself to get a ward all the way up on their back camps to see them, not a great idea. Just wait for your team, let them ward deep. You can ward either on the pit or on one of these flank spots. But the next one to talk about Pyro. Say this is Pyro right now. Again, we're over here. That's the enemy over there. Good ward spots right here is a very good ward spot right around right here. So it can see... From about that spot to about this spot right here gives you very very good line of sight if anybody's walking in and then the other really good spot is just about right here so then you can see if somebody's coming in from this area or if they're trying to wrap around come through if i'm if i'm a jungler and i see oh they're on pyro i'm gonna try to wrap around right here i ping on it as i'm trying to get around the enemy knows i'm coming around and then it's free and then you can you can get vision fast enough up here because this ward is going to ping as, a, as about right here. If you see a mid laner walk up and he's coming like this, it can be like, okay, drop it. Mid laner's going to be able to outscare him, give it up, or just reset it. And then a low key good ward on this is a ward right around there, just to see if the mid laner's, you know, peeking over the wall trying to secure, out secure you. Lastly, Fire Giant Pit, easiest one. Get a ward on your side if you're planning on playing a little bit defensive, you're playing more front to back. If you're playing to dive, get the sentry on the enemy side of the pit so you can be like hitting it like this. And then when the fight breaks out, you can just turn and just run them down. Other really good wards, getting wards on this side, whether it is more defensive or a little bit more aggressive. I think the aggressive ward is better 99% of the time. But if you're on the defensive, a defensive ward is better. And then right here is another really good ward. This area right here. It pings this wall, this wall, this wall, this wall. 
And then you can also get a ward on these backs. This is a really, really contested warding spot. And I don't think it's that important a lot of the time. You can give up this ward spot, especially if you just have like nine wards in hands. Get a ward right here so you can see if they're walking in like this. Get a ward on these backs so you can see if anybody resets on these backs. And then get a ward right around this spot right here so you can see if anyone's walking in to go behind you. And then lastly, the other good ward spot is somewhere right around here or right here to see if somebody's trying to you know flank from from mid those are the the primary war spots for fire or ward spots for fire giant those are the war spots you should be looking for a little ward guide for the season 10 map i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys have a wonderful first day i'll see you guys again next time peace